You see me? Okay. Yes, we see you, Francois. It's working. Hi, nice to uh, you. So now you can try to share your screen using the uh, board screen button on the bottom of your screen. Yes. Oh, we lost. Bonsoir. That happens sometimes. Okay, so Francois will try to join us again. So that's basically the new uh, bring your own HDMI adapter uh, we had to deal with uh, during live conference. Okay, and I see that um, there is a WSO2 uh, booth. Uh, so if you have if you have question that you want to ask to you, and you can go there. Also, is still struggling to join us. Uh, Okay, so we have to fight still a few seconds. Also, is experiencing a few problems with browser. Um, to know that after Francois will talk with uh, Arun Narayan Aswami, who will talk about breaking monolith. Gregory Young will talk about deploying fast with confidence. And after that, the last talk of his session will be with Robert Wunderlich, who will talk about bringing cloud native to world of SaaS. And now we are waiting for Francois Rivard to talk about uh, mixing API and ESB based on case study. And Francois is back. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened. So. That happens. I'm going to share my screen now. It's technology. It's not. Yes. Yes. We see your screen. Maybe not the good one. Yes. We see. You can see. And now we can start. Okay. So the stage is yours. Thank you, Arno. So I'll be a bit quicker because we lost a couple of minutes there, but I'm ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you uh, about the beneficial approach in mixing API and, uh, and ESB. Uh, this event is a lot about API, this API days, right? And uh, what we see uh, in what we do at our customers uh, is that we still have to combine this uh, new generation approach of API with the old generation approach of ESB. And I'm going to explain what can be the benefits of using both because sometimes you can think, okay, there's some overlap and we don't really want to do that. But actually, uh, from a system architecture point of view, that might be interesting. Uh, first, just a, a quick word about Astrakhan, which is uh, the company I created in 2012. Um, we've been publishing some uh, a, a lot of information about what we do with uh, when we create this uh, data and digital integration systems, and actually, that's uh, this conference is about our return on experience. So, to illustrate what I will present today, uh, I will use a return on experience that we have uh, with uh, one of our customers uh, in. Friends, um, who asked us last year to uh, design part of this information system, which is at the middle of the, the information system, which we call the, the middleware, to help them actually achieve several goals and stakes at the same time. The first thing was uh, that they were uh, working part of their information system was not in the cloud, but uh, was uh, hosted by a, a partner. 
and this partner was a, let's say quite of a old school not that reactive so there were a lot of latency each time they had new needs and new requirements so they wanted to migrate a part of their information system back from the hosting partner to their internal information system so um they had to deal with the logic of uh, migration of the information system, moving back a part of their assets uh, from this hosting partner to their own in integration system. But actually, as you know, uh, migration projects, they are not very easy to uh, legitimate. Um, you need you, most of the time new use cases to get the budget to trigger these kind of initiatives. So um, they uh, also worked on exposing APIs to some other external partners, business partners in that case, uh, in order to uh, extend uh, their activity, create new business models, and finance in a way uh, this uh, migration part, this migration sub-project by uh, creating something new for, um, for the existing information system. So this project was actually quite tricky because we had to deal with uh, data flows moving from the hosting partner and duplicated with the new uh, the new architecture of the information system file transfers because we had to deal with file transfers it was not only api and service based architecture it was everything at once so we needed to create something that could be relevant in that context. And uh, we call that uh, a hybrid integration platform because it was part on-premise and partly in the, in the cloud. So that's what we are going to see. So first, this notion of hybrid integration system platform is not something that comes out of uh, people at uh, Astrakhan. It's not something that is uh, exclusive to, to what we do. Actually, this is something that Gartner uh, talks a lot about um, and which makes a lot of sense uh, when you are on the roadmap of digitizing your um, your business. Uh, you can see on this slide, actually, on the right hand side, you see the API part, which is uh, creating new ecosystems, uh, having opening your information system. And you can see in, in gray on the right um, bottom part, uh, the information system platform, the back end, the existing systems that you still have to deal with. And some of these back ends, sometimes they are not accessible through APIs because they are actually uh, symbolizing the, the, the old generation of systems. So that's usually the kind of things we have to deal with when we do uh, the system architecture uh, uh, issues. It's not software uh, architecture. We, we don't have the full freedom to design the, the, the system the way we would like to. We have to deal with all these old generation um, cohabitating at the same time, and we have to find connectors. And we sometimes we find ESB already in place and, and we need to integrate ESB with the API because we just can't get rid of the of the ESB and, and that's the point of this uh, of this talk. So uh, of course it's all about creating a mediation uh, layer that will uh, assess all the problems we can have when we try to interface uh, systems. Today this mediation layer is uh, allows a lot of features uh, that we can see on the right hand side of this page, uh, authentication, authorization, things that can be provided by the NPA management platform, things that are sometimes provided already by an ESB. And that's how we start to see what an hybrid integration platform uh, is, actually. We, most of the time we have to deal and combine the features and the advantages of such platforms as uh, API management, uh, enterprise service bus, ETL, uh, extract transform load sometimes, manage file transfer for sure when there are some, we need to combine all these platforms together to create what we call actually the transverse information system, the information system which is in between that will be extended thanks to uh, the, the help of the API management platforms, but uh, which will make even more sense if we can create something that combines use cases, combines formats from data to file to APIs and back to file sometimes. And this is uh, allowed by the fact that uh, most of the time when we start working on this kind of architectures, the customer, they already have actually uh, some middleware layers working. So what they need now is to rationalize the, this middleware layer and they need to um, create some kind of global governance and global doesn't mean centralized. We don't want to centralize things. We want to be able to um, 
make a benefit out of the microservices architecture. We want to use the containers. It's possible today. We are going to see uh, to see how. But logically, they want to create this kind of layer of mediation that will allow them to allow them to to govern their whole integration strategy. And today, integration strategies in in large corporation is made with files, is made with data, is made with let's say old generation services and made with new generation APIs. And we need to create a global governance for all of this. So it means that this mediation layer, this mediation layer that we'll talk about here uh, can be uh, centralized on, on several components, uh, including API gateways, sometimes uh, collaborating with uh, ESBs when they are here. Sometimes there 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 are no ESB, but it can make sense to have a combined approach of API and ESB gateways together, and, uh, API gateways and ESB together, and that's what we are going to uh, to see uh, now. Uh, we see now current deployment of containerized ESB. Uh, I'm now working in Asia, and that's things we do. I'm working for a company which has a strong API development policy, but still they keep on using ESB for different kind of use cases. And they have containerized this ESB because uh, of course they have some stakes on distribution and deployment of services that uh, cannot uh, be assessed with, um, tackled with a, a central ESB. But uh, actually it works fine and I would see no other way to, uh, to, to build that kind of architecture than uh, making API management and ESB collaborate in that case. So, we are actually uh, building complex uh, integration systems. We are building complex mediation layers that are uh, making all these technologies uh, discussing with each other, sharing the features. Uh, of course, API can be uh, fully distributed. ESB, as I said, can be uh, today fully distributed, but uh, MFT, most of the time, they are technologies which are still monolithic. So we uh, cannot all the time uh, be, we are not able to design those systems the way we would like to. That's as simple as that. But uh, the integration world is made of uh, technologies cohabitating uh, with each other, and we have no choice than, uh, than doing this uh, actually. And sometimes we also extend the capabilities of such an integration platform or such a mediation layer by blending it with master data management, uh, data layers, uh, business process management, all the things that uh, extend the business capability of such a platform in order to make it smarter from a business point of view and create uh, also new services at uh, the information system level. This is all uh, connected with the fact that uh, those integration technologies, they haven't been replacing uh, each other um, over time. We started in the past doing files, then we made data with ETL, then we made services with ESB. Now we do API management, but none of these technologies have actually disappeared. They are still here and actually as long as they are still here, the best way to work with them is to provide some kind of um, layer which makes sense from a from a logical point of view of course behind that we generally have several kind of technologies working together they are not most of the time provided by a unique vendor some of them are open source some of them are not but uh, the idea is to provide a global layer as i said of governance of administration and of monitoring because when we create this kind of system communication system the most important thing to do is to have a common monitoring to monitor all the flows and all the interactions with api with files and so on and uh, usually uh, we do that these days with a combination of Elasticsearch and Kibana because it's uh, the, the easiest way to, to proceed uh, when we see all the kind of formats we have to deal with. That's just an example taken from the, the, the project I presented you at the beginning of the speech. Uh, you see that list of uh, flows that application needs to uh, need to exchange uh, with each other. And you can uh, briefly see on this uh, slide that we have several kinds of uh, protocols. We have several kinds of formats. 
We have uh, some um, flows that imply the on-premise part of the information system. Some flows uh, are making work the hosting partner, and some of them are completely um, located in the cloud uh, because all the uh, the mediation layer itself has been uh, deployed in the cloud with the IBM managed services. Actually, that's what you see here. So that's the architecture of the, the project we, we described. So of course, it's a, a simplified um, presentation of such an architecture. And what do we see here? We see uh, the integration services based on uh, AppConnect Enterprise, which is actually, um, um, uh, how do you say, IBM's uh, ESB. Uh, we see here um, the silo of data, meaning the data which are uh, transferred from the hosting partner on the left-hand side to the central uh, data repository over time, slowly over time, the transactional data. They are pushed here by data flows. They are pushed there by files. Sometimes uh, we do a little bit of service, but most of the time these are some kind of uh, flows uh, that each time a customer is created, each time a customer is updated, we update this repository and we make it a full repository, a full 360 degree uh, customer view over time. We do that by integrating these, the application using the connectors that are uh, provided by the, uh, the IBM ESB. And then we expose all of this intelligence uh, with the API Connect platform, which is the API uh, solution that IBM provides. And of course, we make some, um, there is some interest of using IBM on both sides of uh, this, uh, this architecture because the components actually they are uh, consolidated together and they work fine together. So they are sharing the same actually the, share, the same uh, fabric of, uh, of technology. A little bit more um, detailed architecture, it's basically quite the same. Uh, what we see here is a little bit uh, is is the description of some of the flows that we can uh, that that we can see there, and uh, and these flows actually uh, they are they have been uh, codified in order to make the full system completely uh, maintainable, and when we do the monitoring of the flows, because as you can see the data is actually moving all the time in the information system, we have this kind of codification that allows us to translate the A5 or C1, let's say, into customer flow, customer data flow. Of course, we've been uh, doing uh, modeling of the data. This full system uh, uses canonical formats in order to have one single format at the, the scale of the information system. And actually that allows us to uh, not to connect, not to link all the application and all the mediation layer together, but to keep a little bit of loose uh, connection uh, between the application and then to uh, deploy our migration, uh, our migration policy, uh, because uh, that's the way we do things. We don't want to connect application together, especially when there are new applications coming up and old application that we want to decommission in the in the midterm. A few words now about how the project was done in Agile. I, I just wanted to say here that when you do, when we do API projects, when we do middleware projects, more generally, when we combine architecture and development of orchestrations and flow, it's possible to do it in Agile. Sometimes we don't think we should do that because uh, it's not that business oriented. But if you think a bit about this, the flows themselves, they are manipulating uh, business data. So they've got a business value and it's actually very valuable to create all these uh, flows over time doing sprints because you can actually see uh, you can actually see what we can reuse from an architectural point of view throughout uh, the building of such a construction. Something you should be care about, especially uh, when you are working with the managed services. Uh, most of the time, you uh, your attention is uh, is set on the fact that you are dealing with the volume of transaction. Be aware that uh, the volume of flows is not the only way to size uh, to size such kind of platform. 
they are flow oriented, but actually they are also executing in virtual processes core. And most of the time, the vendors, they do not really pay attention about the sizing of these cores. So that's something you should be aware of. When you're going into production, you may face bottlenecks and that's very unpleasant to face this kind of bottleneck. So uh, be careful because that's usually the last mile and you discover that in the end and it's not uh, something you, you want when you are ready to go to go live. Uh, one last word uh, about uh, the, the architecture uh, of this kind of platforms. Uh, I wanted to conclude this uh, speech showing you the, the market segments of integration. And I uh, highlighted five of them. Those five are exactly the one that uh, are used when we create this kind of hybrid integration platform. So we can see today that uh, when we want to have a global integration policy using APIs, uh, we need data integration tool. We need old school ESBs. We need API. We need new IPaaS also, and we still need uh, files because uh, most information systems are still working with files, uh, relying on files heavily. Of course, we can see the dynamics of these uh, markets. Uh, when the the blue um, the blue part of the, the histogram is lower than the gray part, it means that this market is decreasing. So we can see that ESB are actually. Uh, moving a little bit away. So that's the tendency and that's what we, we see in this uh, API days uh, set of conferences. And we see that API are still progressing, but we think that in the middle term, in the long term even, we will still have to combine all these technologies together to provide a full uh, intelligence at the, the mediation layer level. And uh, we will still need to create this kind of platforms for the benefit of our customers. And we will still need to combine ESB and API for sure uh, in, in the time frame that, to my opinion, will, will last for the next two or three years at least. Okay, so uh, that's it for my part. I think we are okay with the, with the timing. Yes, perfect, Francois. You're right on time. We have even three minutes for Q&A. So if you have questions, type them on the chat window. Uh, that was really an interesting talk. We, uh, we definitely you, more talk about that because that's the real world. Uh, because we, we cannot get rid of what exists. We have to deal with that. Um, Maybe a question about uh, scalability. How do you manage to, uh, uh, how do you deal with existing systems that you cannot scale, but still want to expose them as APIs? You have inside about that. Uh, that's quite a tricky question. Um, that's maybe well. still, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe still using the, the ESB connections as they were. Uh, allows us um, to uh, uh, to uh, limit uh, the accessibility uh, to, to such systems. Uh, API, as we know, API management, they've got some throttling uh, features that help as well. Uh, so we've been designing also communication throttling features, not only between API and the backend systems themselves, but sometimes between API and the ESB. In order to, in order to limit the peaks of activity, and that's the way uh, we can do that. Especially now that some ESB get containerized, that's the way we can do that. Uh, one of the main systems we're working with uh, that we try to interface is SAP. SAP uh, is also moving from the old generation of technology to the new generation in the cloud with microservices and containers, which is called S4. So we also see some progress on that part too. But for sure, sometimes it's not that easy to to to, do, to deal with these old systems. Yeah. Uh, did you have to, for example, uh, directly connect to the database that could be used by existing system to bypass it, maybe, or? We don't do that anymore. We used to do that uh, maybe 15 years ago because of, we had the policy of con non-standard connector that mm -hmm. used to plug directly on, on the databases. Of course, the database administrators used to, to go mad <laughs> with this kind of bad habits. Then we had the services, and today we've got the data gateways that are emerging and that becoming very, very interesting. So we are moving more and more with such uh, abstraction of data layers yeah. in order to combine internal data with open data and so on and get some federated access to the data too. Great. Uh, in 30 seconds, do you have a message to 
vendors, ESB vendors, gateway vendors, what, what do you want from them? Integrate your own integration technologies more and we, all, we will all be happy. <laughs> Is our life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Francois. Thank uh, you very much.